Minasan konnichiwa, Jihan des. If it's your first time here, welcome. Here we talk about languages, mindset, and probably a bunch of other things I have not determined yet. Today I am going to be telling you more about my Japanese journey and more specifically how I learned all Joyo kanji in a matter of month. If you watched my first video, you actually already know that six months ago I started learning Japanese. But unlike most people learning Japanese, I did not start with hiragana and katakana moving on to learning grammar. I actually learned kanji first. This might come across as a little bit strange, but I'm going to be telling you more about the reason why I made this decision. But first of all, let's find out what joyo kanji are. If you've never heard of joyo kanji, which is very unlikely if you're studying Japanese, but still, these are the 2136 kanji or Chinese character that are in common usage. Needless to say, it's not an exhaustive list of all the kanji in existence, but rather a literacy baseline for those who have completed compulsory education in Japan. They are divided into two sets. The first one consists of 1026 characters that are taught in primary school, so grade 1 to 6. The second set consists of 1110 characters that are taught in secondary school, so grade 7 to 12. This means I studied in five months what Japanese kids take 12 years to learn. How? This was all possible thanks to the magical book, or rather the French version of the magical book Remembering the Kanji by James Hasek. Hopefully I pronounced his name right. You might wonder, well, why did you pick the French version? If you watched my first video, you know that French is my mother tongue and that despite my profound affection for the Japanese culture, I delayed learning the Japanese language for so long because I was dreading the complexity of kanji. So I knew that learning kanji would be a lengthy process, a very tiring process. So I decided to go easy on myself and I decided to pick the book in my mother tongue, hoping that this would make things a little bit easier. The second reason is that actually the French version is a little bit augmented in comparison with the original version in English. The method of teaching is actually fairly easy. I would even say that it's very natural. Instead of having you repeat writing the kanji endlessly, it actually teaches you a short story. I would say no more than four to five lines to help you remember the kanji in a fairly logical way. The book is divided into chapters and each chapter is dedicated to one specific theme while all the kanji that derive from one another are coupled together. Now let me explain why I decided to learn kanji first before moving on to actually learning Japanese. I bought this book in August 2020 when I thought I would get serious about learning Japanese. I obviously didn't because I only started the book on January 6th of this year. However, upon buying the book, I still read the back cover, which is better than nothing, right? On the back cover, the author explains that thanks to this method, not only will you learn kanji in a matter of weeks, that was already weird, but you will also have all the adequate tools to remember all kanji for a lifetime. Needless to say, upon reading this, I thought, <laughs> bro, you've lost it. But after forcing myself to actually start the book in January 2021, I realized that he was right. In his intro, the author says that for anyone who does not understand the laws that govern memory retention, remembering the kanji might look like an impossible task. However, when you do know how the human brain works, you understand that in order to memorize something, you need an auditory or a visual stimulus. Interestingly enough, in the book, the author says that even if it's kind of intuitive, it's better to start learning all the joyo kanji first before moving on to learning Japanese. I too thought the idea was a little bit peculiar at first, but I now totally second this advice for the simple reason that you will be able to start reading proper texts 
original texts in Japanese way faster and more comfortably. I personally cannot read a text that is only written in hiragana. I find it extremely difficult because I, you know, all the words are gathered together and it's a bit difficult to understand which word means what. So I totally second this advice now. All in all, I did not complete the book in a matter of weeks. It took me five months. However, it's still insane to me to have learned all Jiryo Kanji in a matter of month. And I am very, very grateful to the author for his method. Of course, learning Kanji requires time, energy, and dedication. But using this method, at least it was the case for me, helps you wrap up this difficult, though enjoyable, <laughs> task way faster than the people who use the traditional methods. Learning kanji, and especially the right stroke order, by yourself is totally possible. And this book does teach you how to properly do that from the get-go. So this book allows you to be independent in your understanding of the language from the start in a fun and educational way. I say educational because in many instances it teaches you aspects of the culture that are seldom known, so it's definitely a plus for me. I know that some people don't actually learn how to write the Chinese characters. Um, well, I guess there's some kind of logic behind it, since the Japanese themselves don't necessarily write them nowadays because of technology. They use their smartphones, they use a keyboard on the computer and they don't necessarily know how to write the kanji anymore. However, well, everybody has their own methods, right? But for me, it's important to actually know how to write and practice writing because, well, first of all, I love drawing. And um, when I write a Chinese character, it's a little bit like drawing, but it's more than that. It's like drawing history. And there's something very aesthetically pleasing about it. There are only two flaws I find with this book. The first one is that sometimes the stories are so intricate that they make little sense and so they will not form a proper image that will stick to your brain. And the second problem is that for some characters, but I would say for no more than 10 characters, there are no stories at all. In both instances, I ended up making up my own stories. So if you think about it, the negative turns into a positive because it stimulates your own creativity. Now let's illustrate the method with an example. This character means to take. It is formed with the radical ear and the radical right hand combined together. The book tells you the story of a gluttonous child that is caught with his hand in the bag of sweets. His father tells him off by taking his ear with his right hand. There you go, straightforward and simple. That's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful and that it gives you a little bit more confidence to learn kanji by yourself. If you have questions, please do let me know in the comments and I will leave the link to the book in both French and English in the description box. So if you're interested, please do check it out. Bye bye.